Good morning, guys. Let me double check real quick to make sure my Wi-Fi is all on. Okay. As you know, we do uh, <clears throat> occasionally have some difficulties because, you know, why would life ever be easy, right? So if we do at any time need to disconnect, we will reconnect when we can. Today I get to interview my Tara. I had the most amazing um, ability to meet her a couple weeks ago and um, she's bigger in life. Y'all, she is bigger in life. I, I love her to pieces. Tara does for me what I do for y'all. So um, she, I, I know, I know I'm really, I'm, I'm actually going to talk for a minute before I bring you on about some of the stuff we're doing in family. Um, as most of you guys know, we are in the midst of our back to school drive campaign. Yesterday, wait, what's today? Okay, Friday morning, I'm sitting in my office and I look up and I see all across my wall, all of the um, different community projects that we do and, and um, our different logos and our, you know, our different banners for all of our everythings. And um, I started crying. I turned around and there behind me because you know my office is my guest room on the bed I have got you can't even see the bed I have got just mounds and mounds and mounds of papers and pencils and crayons and um, backpacks and lunch boxes let me see if I can lower this down a little bit so you guys can see me better um, and I can read these better and um, the, the amount of love that keeps pouring in is, um, it, it, it is always so very, very humbling. Um, I don't think you guys understand just the impact that a little bit of help from every one of you does. Okay, I put out a call two weeks ago saying that we had four families that we wanted to purchase supplies for or we were going to award for families I had 37 families something like that um, apply for assistance now mind you these aren't single parent families or single children families some of them have multiples up to six sorry I'm let my hair grow am I beautiful all right good all right so anyway um Y'all came through so amazing, it, it, and still keep sending them. We got two more weeks of this drive, so don't don't stop yet, okay? But we have almost got every child full back to school. We're talking paper, binders, crayons, pens, backpacks, lunch boxes, um, everything they need to go in and start their school year the best way possible with a good education and. Um, that's love that you're putting back out into that world, guys, and you're doing amazing. So not only did we do all of that, but then we had a emergency child response priority drive. We had a young mom who had some pretty fucking amazing courage to leave a domestic violence situation and uh, take her one-month-old baby with her to a shelter because it was better to be there than in the situation she was in. But that being said, she had to leave everything behind. And in the matter of hours, we had this baby, everything he could need to get going from diapers to formula to bottles to blankets, not just blankets, not just blankets. Some of you bitches are making this baby homemade blankets. Can we say, <sighs> right? Um, the store donated her clothing so that way she has clothing to start over. So in the last 12, 14, wait, hold on, 19 days, <clears throat> in the last 19 days, you guys have supplied kindness 
to almost 60 people in the tune of probably close to five, six hundred dollars in product or funds. Um, and you're changing lives. And I am honored to see it every single time. So don't give up on this drive. We're still going, we're still pushing hard. After this is going to be our Hannah's homecoming. So if you have a teenager, uh, I have, I'm sorry, I, I don't have any boys clothes. Um, you know, most rent a tax anyway. Um, but I do have prom dresses and I've got a shit ton of prom dresses. So if you are in need of helping your child um, get their formal attire for their homecoming, please hit us up and we'd be happy to send you what we got. Um, and then after that, you guys, it's full force Junie project. We got a, we got, a, I, I, last year I asked for um, three kids to get Christmas. Last year, you guys supplied 42 kids, 17 families, not just a Christmas, not just a present. Each child got two to three presents, a full stocking. The family got a full stocking of movie and popcorn and candy to sit around as a family and participate. I want to hit 100 this year, guys. I have already got stuff rolling in, so go to Amazon, go to our wish list and order, and um, let let's go make some magic for some littles. I I am I'm, ugh, it's my favorite time of year, and you'll probably see me cry a lot. Just know it's for a really good cause. Okay, I'm going to um go ahead and bring Tara on so we can go ahead and do with our interview and I can't wait because I love her okay I really oh I'm gonna be kicking shit you're lucky I put the dogs downstairs I had a rough one this one it's hard waking up with no coffee or dead dogs. hey Good morning. This is the only way Tara allows me to have my donuts. <laughs> in, in my coffee. I'm so happy you have them. <laughs> I actually just made some coffee myself so I could have coffee Yay, with you. Yay, I love that. I love that. How was your uh, trip back home, boo? Um, from yeah. Georgia? Oh, it was all right. Yeah. Yeah. My mom, like, flirted with the flight attendant the whole time. <laughs> so I got his number. Oh, you did <laughs> Because, so my mom was trying to talk to him about um, how it is to be a flight attendant and stuff like that because she, she wants my son to go in that direction, which I think would be a great thing for him. So I got his number, not for him. <laughs> I'm happy, yeah. happily in Yeah, I've met your but, man. I almost had to yeah. put Lisa in a crate. <laughs> I know she yeah she was crossing some lines there but, uh, yeah so I got his phone number so my son can reach out to him because he's a recruiter for one of the airlines so it was pretty cool wow that's awesome it's that's what happens when you have a big match my mom <laughs> likes to talk my kind of people <laughs> yeah I love that I love that that is so awesome so T I'm going to kind of go, we're going to go off of some of the questions, but for the most part, we're just going to chatter. So okay. um, how old are you and what were, I want to preface all this by saying, Tara, I had the surgery 17 years ago. So veteran, okay. She's not only been there, done that with the surgery, she's had the weight regained up to 70 pounds yep. and then yep. started taking it back off. Okay, yep. this is what the lifelong journey is about. You are going to have times when that scale is going to climb back up, but somewhere in the back of this little brain is going to start a warning alarm system that says, oh shit, we're going in the wrong direction. We got to buck up. We got to buck up. We know what we need to do because we've done it already. Unfortunately, it took me way too long for my brain to kick yeah, in. And, right, but eventually, way too eventually, long. though, it it does. And 
you find that Good morning, honey. My husband just woke up. You Hi, Chris. Tara's, she, he said, hey. <laughs> he hasn't had coffee yet. Um, so you have to realize that you cannot, you still have to live your life. You're going to have fluctuations in your weight forever, forever, because it can be bloating, yeah. it can be whatever. But at 17 years out, it can be done. It can be done. Even if you have sure. regain. If you have regain, that does not mean that's it. You you, you failed your journey and it's over. That's no. That's not no. what that means. That means. I consider myself a weight loss surgery failure for sure. Because, you, because of your regain? Because of my regain. Because I didn't follow, you know, back then, 17 years ago, there weren't as, it, it, things weren't as strict, yeah, no, right? Right. And there wasn't much follow-up and there wasn't, you know, after I hit my year, I never went back to the doctor or nutritionist or yeah. whatever, ever again. Right. It, it was um, a pretty much I a know. cut and go, literally. Yeah. And I think now it's a little different. Um, but back then, you know, because I didn't exercise and I didn't eat right, you know, my first meal when I was back on solids was a half of a half a bagel. <laughs> you know, right. like that's where- right. That's like carbs and fried right. foods and things like that. That's my go-to. Like you like yeah, nuts. I like the sugar. I do. Sugar yeah, I'm not a sugar girl. Sugar. It's like I'd much rather have fried yeah. foods. But and um, I can, and I'm so my... one of those that I could be like whatever. I I could I could live my whole life not eating fried food ever again and be completely fine. And I could live my whole life without right. sugar. Exactly. Yeah, we're all different. But That's you have good. to learn to work around those. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, and you know, like I'm a firm believer that I will occasionally have fried foods. You know, last weekend I had grilled cheese and, and French fries for lunch. It's not something that I do often anymore, you know, but it's balance. right after surgery. Yeah, it is balanced. And you know, I tease you all the time about donuts. But it's okay to have a donut every once in a while if that's what you want to do. Right. It's it is um, literally guys your body is like a car. If you keep dumping gas in it, which is what a carb is, it's fuel. You keep dumping gas in it, it's just going to spill over. Well, for us, spillover is fat. It just stores. That's the spillover from a carb. If you go to the gas station and the trigger stops, you don't keep putting more fuel into the gas tank, you stop. Because right. your body says, okay, I've had my fill of fuel I now I have to burn it off see that's where my regain came from as most of you know I like to do stupid shit so I fell out of a six foot ladder and I busted my ribs up pretty good I couldn't run and that's like my go-to shit but I couldn't run because I couldn't breathe but I was still eating like I was training for marathons which when I was training for marathons, Tara didn't give a shit what I ate because <laughs> I could eat 12 donuts because I was running 13 miles every, I was running a half marathon every single day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You were burning all the calories right, right back off. And then I hit this yeah. place where it was like, if you sit on, you, you get couch momentum. If you don't work out more than two days in a, you know, if you work out, if you take two days off from exercise in a row or more than that, you're building couch momentum. Your body's like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit and be here. Yeah. But if you keep it going, it, you feed off of it. I love to run, but I'm struggling getting my ass back into <sighs> here doing it. So, yeah. you know, Tara runs, um, Ever, never. No, oh, <laughs> I was gonna say runs her regain. Or never runs. She runs her regain. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she, I thought you were talking about me running. Run I was gonna say she's, she's trying to chase a, chase me with a donut. <laughs> yeah, or I'm running away from something. Right. And, she, and run. she's running. I better run the same direction, just a little bit faster. So yeah. So talk about what we started doing in family for our regain. So um, I started, I realized that, you know, clearly I'm not alone in, in having regain. 
Um, and I've, I put on 70 pounds, but I've been able to take back off 55. Oh, so you are so amazing. I'm, thank you. I'm 15 pounds from my low weight, um, which is my goal weight now. Which is? My, my new goal. Which is? 145. 145. Yeah. So um, I'm hovering right around, like, I think this morning I was 158.8. So um, I am... Uh, I realized that we had a lot of people that were dealing with regain because people were posting in the group, help, I've put on five pounds, I don't know what to do. And so um, I, in the, um, we have like a little mod chat in the mod chat, I said, hey, why don't we do something? Like, oh, there's a lot of people that are, and this is something that I'm passionate about, right? Trying to, to help people not do what I did. Right. So um everybody was on board. So we did this event. We're doing like every two weeks, I'll start a new event that just gives tips on how to deal with regain. Good morning, bub. I, yeah, in a little bit. Morning. My son just woke up. It's just this, yeah. baby. That's Auntie Gail who wants to give you donuts. And you're, <laughs> gonna, just, you're gonna love Auntie. I'm so cool. I'll give you donuts and beer, boo. I got you. <laughs> beer? Dude, he's not even 20 yet. Um, anyway, so let's get back to the regain. So I'm doing these events and giving some um, tips for everybody to help try to get rid of the regain. But then I have the regain intensive group where I'm getting a little bit more in depth and I'm working more one on one with people trying to um, find out what works for them. So like I can tell everyone um, you know, you should have 50% of your breakfast should be carbs and 50% should be um, protein, but that's not going to work for everyone because some people might need more carbs in the morning, especially if they're going to go exercise or they, you know, whatever. So I'm trying in the intensive group to be a little more one -on -one. Um, specific. Yeah. And then, you know, we have people that are working night shifts that it's like, if I say you can't have anything to eat after 7 p.m. Well, that's not going to work for them, right? So that, that was I'm like able one to... of my things is you know, I, yeah. I don't even get off work until 7 p.m. So I don't even get yeah. home until 8, 8, 30. Now I have Tara right. set me up with a message that I get every night and I appreciate it. You don't even know that says kitchen's closed because yep. my worst time is after 9 p.m. I want to sit and just binge eat crap because I'm just, I'm chill. And I'm going to kick this thing so many fucking times. I already know. Anyway, um, so Tara helps me out by sending me a message just to remind me that you've already eaten dinner. You don't need anything else before you go. Right. Right. Yeah, I have an alarm set on my phone. So it goes off at nine o'clock every day. And I text Gail and I tell her, don't go in yep, the kitchen. Kitchen's closed. But I need that You're because my my trigger times are from two to three and from nine to ten. I think most people's are. I, I, I mean, think that's when generally. the carb crash starts, and so yeah. you know, it's that it's that two thirty slump. You know, and and you want your energy back, so you naturally gravitate toward the carb. Except for me, I'm a Benji, so I will walk in and grab a handful of this and a handful of that and a handful of this. When in reality, I need to stick my shit on a plate and sit down at the table because that's going to stop me from grabbing a handful of this and a handful of that. Right. You right. know, it's not always about changing what you're eating, but changing how you're eating. Agreed. You know, if you can sit yeah. down and eat a sandwich and a couple of little chips and some fruit and a vegetable, so be it. That's great. You can sit and have all that, but it's better than eating, you know, oh, look, a bag of chips. Those are simple. I can carry those with me out into the car. Yeah. You know, those kinds of things. I, I... It's important when, if you're on the run and on the go, it's important to have healthy things to, to just grab and Absolutely. bring with you, you know, because I, sometimes it's like, it's like that we're busy, right. right? Especially those of us that are moms or, um, you know, involved in multiple right. activities. I run three it's like, businesses and my own personal job. So I work 15 to 17 hours a day. So my right. worst time when I want to eat because I'm a former smoker is when I'm in the car because I traded one bad habit for the other. For another. And so yeah. now what I try to do is keep protein bars in the car 
and I always mm -hmm. tried to cut up some fruit and keep it in my little um, freezer pack thingy um, to keep it cold all day. So I have something fresh to munch on. Um, right. Are you or have you ever been a, like for me, every time I walk in the kitchen, I want to look in the refrigerator. Yeah. I mean, I definitely was like that. Um, you know, recently I've, I've, you know, I, I started really exercising and trying to eat healthy about four years ago after I gained right. all this weight back. Um, and most of it was exercise for me. I did the exercise thing for a while and um, I really didn't, I changed my eating a little bit, but not so much. And I was still one of those snackers. Like I just wanted to snack all the right. time. And just recently within the last couple of months, I changed that all together. I said, okay, this is what, this is how I'm going to eat. I'm going to have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and one snack if I need it between lunch and dinner, and that's going to be it. And after dinner, I don't touch another piece because of food. Because honestly, period. I mean, let's be honest. You really, you want to eat it, but you don't need it. Don't need it. Because no. you've already eaten dinner. I've, Your body's fine. It's got the fuel. It's about ready to shut down for the night, so it doesn't need to right. burn as much shit. So many of us have gotten to the point where we needed surgery because we were snackers. I think a lot of it has to do with snacking. And I would snack mindlessly. I would snack on things when I wasn't hungry. I would snack because I was bored, because I was upset, because I, you know, you have to learn how to disconnect your emotions from fueling your body. And that is what trips us all up. Because, and, and Please don't send me personal messages on this. I'm not going to sit and argue for debate. I'm just saying it how it truly is. Every single one of us here is a food addict. Whether you want to admit it to yourself or not, you wouldn't be here if you weren't. Because mm -hmm. the food addict doesn't have an off switch, which means you will eat to the point where you gain weight. Any person that is overweight has got some kind of issue in regards to food. It's Bottom true. Line. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had a lady say, yeah, but, you know, it's not really like, or like alcoholism. They can choose not to have an alcoholic drink. We can't choose to not eat. And I said, well, hold the phone. They can choose to have a non-alcoholic drink, which means we can choose to have the healthier foods that fuel our body, not when we not done. the crap. Right. So don't don't just assume because it's not the same kind of overindulgence that it's not accurate. Anything in excess right. is bad, including working out which was one of my big pitfalls. When I first started, guys, I was so gun-ho. I literally ran my... At one point, Tara was like, girl, you need to slow down. I was running like 75 miles a week. It was... It was I was literally killing myself with exercise. Right. It's that balance. Yeah. And... Um, it's nice to know that 17 years later, you still struggle. For sure. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, but you can struggle and be okay. You know, I see it. Yeah. You know, it was, Tara was so validating to me because I was trying to explain that the food is, I know I'm not hungry, but those fucking cookies are screwed. I mean, screaming, it's okay. You can eat it. You know, you want to, you know, it's fine. It's not a big deal. You run it off later. Yada, yada. No, I'm not going to eat it. No, I'm not going to eat it. Then the self-sabotage right. starts. Oh, fuck it. Who cares? Just go ahead and have some. It's not a big deal. Right. And you know. I've already ruined the day. Let me go have some right. more. Let me. Exactly. Yeah. And then in the next morning, we all step on the scale and we're like hungover from a bender going, what the fuck did I do? Now yeah. I have to work four times as hard to get off the five pounds I gained in one day. So I think it's important for people to realize that there are two different types of people when it comes to 
indulging or um, or having something that you really want. And, you know, we're, we're talking about balance, but there's some people that can't do that balance. Like I know for me, I'm kind of one of them. Cause if I, if I have, you know, um, it's the salty right. fried food, whatever. If I know I have one of those things, even if I go and have one French fry, I'm not going to stop at one. So most of the time I completely avoid those right. foods. Now there's the other people who could have one French fry or one bite of a donut or one cookie and be done with it. And, and it'll last them for a week and be like, I had the one cookie and I feel right. better. So you have to realize who you are, like, what kind of person you are. If you're okay to have the one cookie or whatever, then do it. You know, you just have to realize that that one cookie needs to be the end of it, you know, instead of multiple because cookies. Because at or the end of the day, day you've now cookies. had a bad food day that you've justified as one bad day of food. But we all right. know come tomorrow about mm, six hours after you've stepped on the scale, you know, fuck the scale. I'm going to have myself a da-da-da-da-da, you know? And then you get home and the scale's right there in your bathroom again. And then you start going, oh, shit, you know? And when you, when you do that for eight, nine years like mm -hmm. I did, you get 70 pounds of right. weight gain. Absolutely. Um, for yeah. me, it's the, um, where is my trigger? You know, I am spending so much time right now, honestly, within myself, trying to figure out where during that 2.30, during that 9 p.m., what is triggering me? Because right. something is. Because I can go all day and have an itty-bitty little stomach and eat just the right amount of food and be just fine until these specific times. And then I can fucking eat all damn day and... That's all. And it's like all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I have a stomach again. You know, I mean, it's just weird. And um, yeah. it's hard to disassociate from that. You know, it's like smoking a cigarette. I can't have just one cigarette. I'll end up smoking the whole damn carton. I can't just have yep. one Oreo. I'm going to eat the whole sleeve. Right. You know, it's just it's just nuts. So, T, what surgery did you have 17 years ago? I had uh, Ruin Y, gastric bypass. So did you have the full open? No, it was laparoscopic. Really? 17 years ago, they yep. still had that? Yep. Wow. Yep. I, was, uh, I wasn't really given a choice. So back then, my doctor, um, I'm in New Jersey. My doctor, doctor was at a Morristown Medical Center. And they gave us two choices. One was R&Y R and y or the lap band which my doctor only reserved the lap band for people with a lot of comorbidities and people that were older. And at the time I was 27, 28, somewhere around there. And he didn't really give me a choice. He's like, you, this is what you're going to have. And I said, okay. right, right. <laughs> and that's I had. me. But the, but the yeah. surgery doesn't fix you. Let, let's get yeah. that straight. We all go in thinking it's gonna, but it's yeah. not. It's here. It's definitely a tool. Right. Yeah. So um, how was your recovery from that 17 years ago? I mean, it, it, I remember a lot of the things that people talk about on uh, Family Now. It's like, I remember I was in the hospital overnight. I, uh, you know, I had a lot of gas buildup, you know, just like everyone else does. Um, but I think I was back to work in a week. Now, I, I'm an office worker, so, you know, I'm not really doing much sitting at a desk, so... Um, you know, at the time I elected to have the surgery because I was a single parent of justice who you maybe just heard in the background. Um, and he was like two and I wanted to be able to take care of him. And, uh, you know, for a while, obviously I couldn't lift him right. or, you know, do all the things like, you know, most moms do, but I have a very supportive family and they were here helping me along. Um, what were you heavy your whole life or did something trigger your weight gain? No, I don't, you know, I, I pretty much was heavy since, um, <laughs> that, that <laughs> no, was mine. You know, I was heavy before, since yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it was about, uh, between second and third grade when I started packing on the pounds. Um, nothing really triggered it. It was, uh, you know, I come from a family of big people and we like to eat. My, 
We celebrate my surname everything is with food. Littles. My last name used to be Little. Well, try being yeah. the fat kid with your last name Little. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, could, couldn't ask for. And then you know, my first name's Gail, so it was always Whale. So I oh. got I got it all as a kid it, because when People I was be cool. in. I had to have been at least 120 pounds in the third grade because I was probably I, I that, was yeah. 285 in high school and I really started packing on the pounds then because I worked at McDonald's so mm. I was able to that was how I ate that was my you know I <laughs> left school and went straight to work and that's where I ate and we got free food because we worked there. So that's where we went for lunch and that's where we went for breakfast. And, you know, yep. when you're 16, 17 years old, you don't think about 30 and your knees blowing out no. or your back giving out, you know, it, yeah. you are immortal and weight is just something that mean that people are being mean when they talk to you about. That's yeah. how I always felt. You know, my parents tried to talk to me all the time about my weight gain, and all it did was shove me into a bag of chips. Yeah, you can't. It's when when you have a young child, you just have to show them. Yeah. You know, like you have to live that healthier life and show them. You can't push them in a certain direction. I've learned they'll, this. they'll ball. Yeah. They'll they'll. They'll yeah. fight you back. Oh, no, they'll go the exact opposite yeah. direction. Absolutely. Yeah. So you just have to, you have to be that positive example for your kids. And I, you know, when Justice was young, I was still eating like garbage, even though I had the, the surgery and, um, you know, he didn't get the benefit of me cooking healthy for him. And now I have a younger child who's 12, Cooper, and he, um, he eats he way healthier and is more apt to try new things because I do cook a little bit better now, you know? So it's unfortunate. Justice isn't heavy, thank God. You know he's pretty active. Uh, he's at a great. You, you got girlfriend. Yeah. Oh yeah. You exactly. got some beautiful babies. I ain't even gonna lie. You got you thank got you. yourself some beautiful babies. Um, Unfortunately, neither one like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm yeah. sure that they got your heart, Mama, because it's gorgeous. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, I just want to roll this out real quick. Uh, September 1st, we're going to be rolling out our BWLF kids. So for our members who have children that are struggling with body image and overweight, we feel that it would be more of a benefit hearing it from somebody that's not mom and dad, how to eat better, how to move better, and give them the exact same qualities that family has but a kid's version, friendlier version, we won't allow them to say fuck, I promise. But, but. God, I hope but, not, Gail. But we want to give them a place where uh, they are not judged and they can ask their questions safely that mom and dad aren't going to freak out about. Um, and so we really hope that if you have children that are struggling, we our goal is to cut obesity off at its knees. And the only way we can do that is by teaching our children how the body operates in regards to food and fuel and exercise and um, all that kind of stuff. And it's we're really excited about it. So we can't wait to roll it out and get some feedback. Um, Tara's going to be putting some recipes in there too and – it's it's going to be great. It's really going to be amazing, and I cannot wait. So, T, did you ever feel um, you were treated – do you feel you were treated differently being overweight than you do now? Like, people look at you differently at the store, or do you ever feel like, you know, people were laughing at you, or I, – I was lucky enough uh, as I was growing up um, – to be, I think my parents, because my parents instilled in me the, the idea that you need to be kind and nice to everyone. So I was that kind of person that had, like, I was everyone's friend. So I didn't have any, 
I didn't feel like there was anybody specifically targeting me. I didn't feel like I was excluded from things because I was very active. I played softball and I was in marching band and stuff like that. But the only the only reason I felt different than anyone else is because when I got older and all my friends started having boyfriends, I was everyone's friend, but nobody's girlfriend. You know, like it got to the point where I was like, all right, well, he talks to me every day. He know I know he likes my personality. Like I don't get it, you know, but I got it, you know. Absolutely. And that's really the only thing that I remember really dealing with. I was always my biggest times when it would really resonate with me is when all my girlfriends were sharing clothes oh, and I yeah. didn't have that luxury. I remember the very first time after I had lost all my weight, um, I had had the kids out and about and every now and then here in Georgia, we'll have like a flash storm will just kind of appear. And it's like, you know, waterfall, there's no little raindrops. It's just solid sheets. And I had had the kids out and about, so I was soaked. And I was like, okay, Julie goes, well, why don't you go upstairs and grab some of my clothes and try them on? And I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm going to fit in her clothes, you know? But I went upstairs and grabbed the big biggest things I could find because I was soaking wet. And right. I was like, oh, my God, these fit. And it was literally the first time that I ever got to share clothes with a friend. That's awesome. You know, and yeah. I remember as a kid just being so frustrated because I didn't feel like um, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the weight off. Mm -hmm. I did all of yeah, the all diets when I was in school. OptiFast, SlimFast, pills that I didn't even know what they were or like. My parents had me going and they weren't forcing me. It was because I wanted it, you know? Um, but every, every single thing you could possibly imagine I tried and I'd go, I'd lose weight and then I'd gain it and then I'd lose it and then I'd gain it. But it's not just the balance of gaining what you've lost. You've now gained what you lost plus another 20. But yeah, you know, for sure. that's just how those kinds of diets work and why diets yep. don't work. Diets don't work. You're absolutely right. You, you have to change your menu. Yeah. Life. Your life. Yes. You, ha you have to change it. You can't just assume that it's going to be over. So what's your favorite segment on family and why? Um, well, you know, I'm kind of partial to the regain segments, but um, that's just because they're right. mine. <laughs> no, but that's why we have our own individual segments. My segment is my right. favorite segment, but second segment, right. you know, that someone else does. Okay, so um, I kind of like Fuck It uh. Friday. <laughs> just because, like, and it's so funny because people will go on there and be, like, just rambling about, like, the worst thing that happened to them this week. And we all just, like, let yeah. it happen, you know? Nobody's, nobody comments on each other. I just like to be able to let right. it go. And that's the beautiful part about Fuck It Friday. It's not I'm posting here for you to give me a response. It's for yeah, me no. to scream what's stuck in here because I can't in my real world because it's going to cost me my job or cost me my marriage yeah. or hurt my kids. Because sometimes you just have to say, I fucking hate you right now. You're being yeah. a dick. Without saying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know but you can't do that you can't look at your four-year-old and say you're being a little shit go the fuck away you know no so i don't recommend yeah you know yeah. or put him in the dog crate which you know i've heard is not okay to do but whatever people are so crazy so you're really close with your family so were they mm -hmm. very supportive of you having the surgery yeah, actually, I have a nephew. Um, I have a sister that's way older than I am. So I have a nephew who's only three years younger. And he and I had the surgery together. So we went oh. and um, did all the pre-op stuff that's together. Cool. His was about a month before mine. That's cool. That's pretty yeah. So yeah, our from, family was supportive. I mean, I don't want to keep harping on how long ago you've had the surgery. But I, I think it's phenomenal that, Tara, you give hope to all of us. You know, the newbies who are three, four, five, six, seven months out, 
they can say, okay, it can be done. I got this. I got this. But then there's us at two, three, four, five years out that are struggling because we're trying to combat the 30 some odd years of bad habits that we have. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's like, are we going to make it through this? Because, you know, year one, two, you're so excited. You're ready to go. But by yeah. year three, four, five, reality starts to kick in and life starts yeah. to happen again. Yep. Um, so for me, it's like, okay, yeah, I've had 50 pounds of regain. Yes, I'm struggling. But you know what? Tara did it. I did. I did. You guys Absolutely. can do it. It's, it's not, you know, I, I hope that through us talking about this, I, my hope is that people don't have to regain because they, they do what they need to do and continue to follow a healthy lifestyle and exercise and eat healthy. And, you know, veggies are important people. Like we gotta be, we have to eat them. We have to continue to eat our protein. And when you are, you know, just out of surgery or, you know, nine months out or whatever, and all you eat all day is carbs, you know, that this is going to eventually come back and bite you in the ass, you know? Eventually. So I, my hope is that everyone gets to the point where they don't experience the regain. It's not, it's not like set in stone that you're going to. Oh, regain. no, not at all. The, the problem is, yeah. is um, for some of us, like I said, something happens. Like for me, I, I busted my ribs. So sure. it triggered a whole slew of different uh, you know, we had to put Finn down. So depression kicked in and I still can't run and I can't burn off that depression with the endorphin release from working out because I can't. Right. So I find it in the bottom of a donut because that's my yeah. go-to. I'm hurting physically and emotionally. Give me something to make me happy. So we all have to find that yeah. thing that can make us happy, even if we can't exercise, right? Because right? there's a lot of people who have had surgery and can't exercise. There's like medical reasons. Right. I can't get up. I can't. My knees are I blown. Have a bad my knee. back is yeah. fucked up. Right. Yeah. So you have to realize that there, you need to have something like that to make you happy. You have to figure out what it is that can make you happy that is not on a plate or on the end of a right. fork. Because food does not make you happy. You know, I, I notice that now when I do every so often, like last weekend, I said I had the grilled cheese right. and French fries. I notice when I eat like that, I feel like right? crap, not only physically, but emotionally. And mentally, because so, you start berating yourself. Yeah. Why did I do that? God, I, I know yeah. better than to do that. Now look how I feel. And all I can say is for things like that, cut yourself some slack. If, yeah. if you know it's something that you don't do all the time, right? cut yourself some slack. It's life. Yeah. Life's going to happen. Did you regain anything while you were on vacation, T? No. That's good. Yeah. And if I did, it was like like I put on a pound or two pounds and then I, I'm home a day. And it's right, gone. right. You know, exactly. So I, I do weigh myself every day now and I make sure that I track all my foods and I know, like, I know when I've screwed up, obviously I know when I haven't eaten exactly how I should be eating. Um, when I get on the scale the next day, I'll see that five ounce regain or six pound, not six pounds. I never gain that much overnight, but six (laughs) in one day. But I also know yesterday I ate Mexican food. So all the salt on top of the fact that my hormones are like right at this moment. So I know. Yeah. If you had a lot of salt, you're going to definitely retain water too, especially if you didn't drink enough. And, and so I, I know that I know not to panic. Yeah. But okay. Buckle down and create a plan. Yeah. You know, um, what is the best thing that has happened to you since surgery? Well, that's a loaded question. We have 17 things to go through. Um, I think that I can't necessarily say that surgery did this for me, but, but turning, turning into somebody who was 
an, an exercise person and an eating healthy person and just changing my lifestyle altogether, becoming more healthy has made me 6,000 times happier. Like I found happiness that I never knew I could have. Which is what this journey is honestly really about. Yeah. It's not about getting skinny. No. You know? Although skinny is It's good. a great, it, it's a no, side skinny's effect. not good. I don't like it's skinny. It's a side effect. You know? Um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. But the goal for this is to face the demons that got us there to begin with so we don't go back there again. Right. And that's where my struggle is right now. I'm facing some serious demons. Um, some sure. days I win. Some days it wins. But every day the battle continues. And as right. long as I just try, that it's not about the number on the scale for me right now. It's about effort. Did yeah. I put in the effort? And as long as you pick yourself up every morning and continue right. on... You know, exactly. that's what it's all about. What is the worst thing to have happened to you since surgery? Um, I mean, you know, we all suffer from lots of stomach issues afterwards. Like, especially, I don't know if it's the same for sleeve patients, but like the gurgling going on. That's why mine's called the, dragon, okay? Because you can hear it and in the, the gas next room. And the, <laughs> Yeah, I, I need to, like, definitely buy stock in Gas-X because that's something that I – no matter how healthy I eat, it doesn't make a difference. It's like I'm always, like – and it gets yeah. stuck, and it's not like I'm – it's not like I'm belching or farting or, you know, I'm, I got to whisper because it's not – none of that's happening. It's getting stuck, and I get pains, and I'm bent over. And it's horrible. I mean, there's been times I've gone to the hospital right. over it. No, it's, it's horrible. It feels like a period cramp right in the middle of your belly. It's Yeah, mine's usually on the oh. side – the ribs. Yes, I, I hate yeah. that. That's yeah, and I had to have my gallbladder out too, but you know, right. it is what exactly. it is. I literally had my gallbladder removed one year to the day from my sleeve. And I really? yeah, I was. I June twenty third, twenty fifteen I had my sleeve. June twenty third, twenty sixteen I had my gallbladder removed by wow. the same doctor that did my sleeve. So I looked at it and I'm like, Well, can you throw in damn tummy tuck because you've already gotten two <laughs> organs out of me in one year so i mean come on there's gotta yeah. get, buy one get one or something you didn't right. go for it asshole could totally use that yeah. too they never no, do I know it what what impossible dream have you or do you wish to accomplish something you never thought you could do but was always curious to you toe the line of wanting to do it. Um, well, I would say, like, definitely getting back down to my low weight would be something that, you know, four years ago I never thought I'd be able to do. You know, I was back up to 220 pounds or so, and um, to get back down to 145 would be phenomenal. You know, I'm getting right. there. And you're doing it. You are working it I'm hard, and it. you're inspiring everybody else to work hard right along next to you. I'd, I'd like to say that, you know, I'd like to run a 5K, but I don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I, you know, I work out six days a week. I can do burpees and push-ups and I can lift heavy weights. And, but when it comes to running, I've got the worst flat feet right. on the planet. So it's, we're just flat the feet opposite. And, I, yeah could go my whole life and not give a shit about lifting weights or doing burpees are some trainer the is devil. burning in hell somewhere for even inventing this shit. But um, you give me some tennis shoes. I'm gone. Yeah. You know, nah. but, but if you made, if my only workout choice was to ride a bike, I would never work out a day in my life. Hmm. Yeah, I don't mind riding bikes. It's the running, the pavement, yeah, pounding, but you've got running. Flat feet, so I mean yeah. that's extremely painful. All right, I know you got to go yeah. to church here soon, so we're gonna go a little bit faster. Any words of advice to pre-ops? Well, um, you know, follow your doctor's orders. You know, that's like my my biggest advice. The, you know, 
I kind of strayed from doing that and hence where the regain came from. So my, my advice would be follow your plan. And remember all um, doctors plans are different. Yeah, so, they are. I don't get it, but they are. Look, this is how I tell, <laughs> tell a lot of the pre-ops after surgery. It's a crap shoot. And the reason why I say that is because nobody knows they know you need protein, but they will not agree on how much or what kind. They know you need vitamins, but they will not agree on how much and what kind. They know they right. they know that you need to physically move. They they know certain things, but other than that, no one knows because if they did, everyone would have the same plan. Plan. And we don't. Right. Our DNA is unique, therefore we need to make this journey unique because what works for me might not work for Tara and in the reverse because our bodies process foods and things completely different. So right. after surgery, when you're in that struggle and you're like, oh no, I don't know what to do, it follow your doctor's plans. They know your DNA. They know your body. They're trying to guide you the best that they can. If that doesn't work... Right adjust and see what that works for you. But all that right. involves is tracking what you're doing because you can't adjust without knowing what you have. Right. So what are some words of encouragement to post ops? Just don't give up, you know, like, um, like Gail said, follow your doctor's plans, but there's going to come a certain point where their plans are going to end, right? You're, you're going to go see the doctor for a year or 18 months or two years. I don't know how long your doctors make you follow them. Mine was Mine a was year and that two. was that. Mm -hmm. So then after that, you have to do exactly what Gail just said. You have to find out what works for you. It's, and you know, that's the great thing about family. You can, you can ask questions there and people are going to give you advice. Like it doesn't work for me to do certain things that might work for you. So I burn, you know, you I just burn and will drop weight faster by running than I ever will doing yeah. anything else. But mm -hmm. that's what I've conditioned my body to do. Right. You know, um, Tara might drop more weight by lifting weights. I don't actually, if I start doing a lot of lifting weights, I tend to gain more. Because yeah. my body's used to burning by running. You got, you got to constantly shock your system. Yeah, there's a, it's a good plan to always do a little exactly. bit of all of that. Uh, T, is there anything you wish to add? Guys, if you have any questions of T, go ahead and, and post them. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm, you know, I joined family. I don't know, we're coming on two years now. We maybe? are in January will be three years old. Okay. So I didn't, I wasn't in the very beginning, but I joined not too long after mm -hmm. I think. Um, and I joined because I want people to be able to use me as a resource. So I have 17 years of experience doing this. I'm not perfect by any means. Um, my advice might not work for yours. Have questions. hesitate to tag me in a post if it's about exercise or healthy eating or any of those things and join NYBC like you all should be exercising so you all should be on the exercise page that we run NYBC guys new you boot camp that's what it stands for it's a place for you to get help learning how to work out and the encouragement to continue to work out and the um ideas on how to work out. So utilize that tool because it is phenomenal there. Yeah. Even if you're just like reading and watching whatever. You can see how the proper form to do a squat or a deadlift or whatever the, you know, the case may be. So even if you're not act actively contributing, you can be just watching and following along. Exactly, exactly. Or you might learn of a new workout or a new something that all of a sudden you're like, oh, 
I want to try that. Yeah. I didn't know people did that. You right. know, that's a thing. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta try that thing. You know, I, yeah. it's, it's really cool. And we also do challenges there. Um, we do where for $10 a month, um, and you can pay as you go every month, you can sign up with Tara and she will tag you and work out posts to help tr track you in our 20 days. Uh, we ask for, hi, Cindy, I miss you. We ask for 20 days out of 30, a commitment to work out 20 days out of every month, which if you think about it, five days a week, guys, five days a week, yep. 30 minutes a day. That's it. That's it. And Tara will tag you and see how you've done throughout the day. And it really works. It does. It helps motivate yeah. people. It helps to keep them money accountable. Money talks. You're not going to want to waste your money. And everything is tax deductible. It's a donation to the charity. So utilize it. We will also Do it. be doing our playoffs. <laughs> Um, and we're trying to formulate a good way to, to run that where we can uh, create a pot and then whoever wins the playoff will receive a portion of that pot and the rest will go to family's charity. Um, so we're still kind of in the learning phase of that. We might actually launch that next year when we can. Um, but we are, yeah, I know I froze, guys. It's because Becca was trying to call me. She tries to call me every morning. Okay, y'all. Um, T, I love you. Love you, you too. Great... Oh, did you see all those? Let me tell you, my bitches. Tara, <laughs> Tara couldn't meet up with the New York. Oh God. <laughs> Tara couldn't meet up with the New York crew, so they got a three foot fucking Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> printed a, These girls are crazy. Printed a picture of Tara's face and carried this thing around all over New York as a mini Tara. Yeah. She had donuts. <laughs> she was getting loved. She was high fiving the liquor store guy. She was chilling in the pool. She was doing backflips on a trampoline. I think at midnight last night was the newest one. I was cracking up. My people have got the best sense of humor ever. I love it. I love it. It was great. I was laughing so hard. I almost peed my pants. Yeah, they're, they're, they're hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. They had me doing yoga this morning know, and drinking coffee. I, know, right? so. I, mean, I think, I think I'm going to have them bring it down for the Carson show when we do our one hour special. There either. That's funny. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, guys. We love you. Have a great Sunday. All right, love have you. a good time at church. And if you guys have Thank any you. questions, you can post them here and we can go back and answer them later. All right, doll face. All my love to you. Bye. Bye.